my goodness. Let me scroll up on this note. Let me just look here. This is going to be kind of hard because he didn't even document how many actinic keratosis that he actually removed off of the body. He knows the actinic keratosis are about numbers and how many got removed. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to have to query. Intergumatory system. What's up, Boozy Cody family? Welcome back to my channel, Cody with Amanda Chalk. Well, you already know the drill. I'm Amanda Victoria Chalk. I'm a coder. I'm an auditor. I'm a CCSP through AHIMA. I'm a mentor. I'm a coach. And I'm your girl for all things medical coding. So, this week's video is going to be all about that skin, honey. Yes, we're going to talk about the integumentary system, all right? So, this week's video will actually be educational, so hopefully you'll be learning something. So, before I go ahead and jump into this new drip, let me go ahead and do my due diligence and tell my new subscribers, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch a little on me, and let me tell my old subscribers, you know I appreciate you guys so much. Keep sharing the videos because sharing is definitely caring because my goal is to create a whole bunch of elite coders, honey. Just like me, Flip's hair. Yes, you're going to be elite when you get through with my channel. Okay, so listen, let's go ahead and jump right into the video and stop playing. We're going to talk about the integumentary system. Now, today I'm not going to do every single a procedure in my CPT book. So we're definitely going to be looking through uh, the CPT book here, okay? So as you can see, I have my 2021 CPT book. Make sure you keep those code books current so that you won't miss anything and code anything incorrectly, okay? So try to keep them current if you can. But anywho, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the, the video. So again, I'm not going to do every single procedure. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hit on the ones that I think that are important, uh, especially to people that may be new. You know, you might be going into the primary, into primary care. Uh, to me, that's the most simplest thing that you can do. All things start with primary care. Everything starts with primary care and then it gets referred out to heme onc or, or neurology or, or endocrinology, but it all starts with primary care and a referral. So, you know, primary care physicians do do some of these procedures in the integumentary section of your CPT book, but the majority of the procedures will probably be performed by who? Good old dermatologists, okay? Those are skin doctors. They specialize in the skin, okay? But mainly... Um, I tried to highlight the ones that could be either or, you know, your primary care physician, he can do some things, you know, in the integumentary system with no problem, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about the simple stuff. I'm going to do the simple stuff because the more complicated stuff, for instance, like the most micro microscopic surgeries and stuff like that, like that would, that would literally take me like a whole 20 minutes just by itself to try to, maybe 20 to 30, to try to explain to you uh, what that procedure really means, okay? So, let me just get into it. So, the very first uh, procedure that we're going to discuss is incision and drainage, okay? So, that's pretty much, si that's simple in a nutshell, okay? Incision and drainage, they're going to incise something, you know, stick a needle in something and drain the fluid out of it, the pus, uh, the pressure, whatever is inside of it, you know, they're going to drain it out. So when it comes down to INDs, um, it's going to be pretty simple here. The, the code set is going to be 10040 through 10180. So look for that in your CPT book. Again, let me repeat the code range, 10040 through 10180. Sorry about that. But um, so it's definitely going to depend upon what you're incising and draining, okay? Because they have different things for these codes. So, for instance, acne is 10040. If you're going to, you know, incise and drain a comedone or, you know, um, a pustule or what they call a multiple milia, you know, that's like acne surgery. They consider that acne surgery, and that would be code 10040. So, you definitely want to pay attention in when you're whenever you're coding operative reports, Two keywords, okay? Because if you know that it's an incision and drainage, you're going to go directly to this little section here of, of the skin. That is, you, you're going to go directly to this little section here, incision and drainage. There, you know, and then you're going to find whatever they're doing, you know. So, 
once you become skilled at, at this, like you can start looking things up that way. I know a lot of people, the proper way to do it is go to the back of the book, right? And look up incision and drainage and then find it and do what you got to do. But because I've been doing it for so long, you know, I know where I need to look. And you will too once you become a season coder, okay? But um, that's that would be for acne. And then you got, what else do they do? Um, they can in, in, incise and drain a polonial cyst. Um, sometimes it could be a simple cyst. Sometimes it could be complicated. And depending on what that is, you know, the, the CPT code will change. Of course, the complicated code will probably cost more money or have more money attached to it. But um, you definitely want to, you know, query your provider if you're not sure if, if he's doing a simple incision and drainage or a complicated incision and drainage. It's, it's no harm in asking good questions. It's okay to ask questions. Just make sure they're not stupid questions and make sure they're good questions. Because I'm sure they don't mind as long as it's got a dollar sign attached to it. Okay? So, that's that. Uh, what else would might be relevant here in the uh, incision and drainage section? section? Um, oh, they, they can incise and drain a hematoma, um, a bulla, a cyst, or they can even do a complex po post-operative wound. You know, sometimes... You know, when you have surgery, your wound, your post-operative wound may get infected. It's also a code for that in this section as well, 101A0. So, again, I'm hitting the procedures that could be, you know, pretty relevant for, like, primary care and dermatology, okay? Like, a primary care could doctor could do any of the ones I just mentioned, okay? So, I call it a simple procedure. So, that's all I'm hitting on today. What I see every day, every day, every day, and it's simple. Okay, let's go to the next one because I don't want to make this video too long. We're going to talk about uh, the pairing and the cutting of corns and calluses, okay? So, again, whenever you pick up these operative reports, that's a key word. When you, when you see that the provider has documented a corn or a callus and you see that he has to get it off, then you want to just flip to uh, the pairing or the cutting section here in the integumentary section of your CPT book. Again, let's see. Where is it at? Right here. I think it's that. Yeah, right there. That says pairing or cutting. Pairing or cutting. And that's uh, a corn or a callus. So, you know, that's pretty simple. Pretty pretty cut and dry. You can't really screw up a freaking uh, 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 procedure that's about a corn or a callus because it's only two codes. No, three codes that you could use. Uh, 11055 is for one. Uh, 11056 is for two to four. And 11057 is for more than four lesions, okay? So you can't really screw that up. That's pretty simple stuff. And again, you know, a, a PCP could do that. A dermatologist could do that. Also, a podiatrist will, will do this commonly, uh, commonly all the time, okay? So believe that. So if you're coding any podiatry encounters, you're definitely going to see that, all right? And the third thing I'm going to talk about that's really common is um, biopsy, Okay. So anybody can cut something off and then send it off to surgical pathology uh, for a biopsy, okay? So here's the thing that I want to explain to you guys about um, biopsy because I used to get really confused about this, like really, really confused. When a, when a physician is, you know, performing a biopsy, they're not taking off the whole thing. So that's one thing that you need to understand because a lot of people are like, well, should, when they read op reports, they're like, well, should I code the excision code or should I code the biopsy code, okay? And so it can get confusing, but I want you to just always remember that when a provider is performing a biopsy, they are not removing the whole lesion. They are not, so let me repeat, for the people in the back, they are not removing the whole lesion. They are removing a tiny sample of that lesion to see if that is cancerous or, or whatever they think it might be, okay? So there are different types of biopsies um, and I'm just going to try to explain them quickly and break them down. Um, you would need to know. I always go into your um, CPT book, you guys, and, and don't ignore, don't ignore these words here, okay? Whenever you have these little notes above the section, make sure that you know these notes very well because they're, they are here for a reason. They're here to tell you important things that you need to know. Like, for instance... This, this biopsy section is telling you some good information and you really need to know that it's three types of biopsies, okay? So it's either a tangent, tangential biopsy, a punch biopsy, or an incisional biopsy, okay? So according to what you read on your operative report, 
will determine what you're going to code, all right? And it kind of gives you a little brief description of each one. Um, so it's telling you that uh, a tangential biopsy uh, can, can be performed by shave, scoop, they can saucerize it or use a curette. Um, it's performed with a sharp blade, such as a flexible uh, biopsy blade. And it's telling you that um, they remove a sample of the epidermal tissue with or without portions of the underlying dermis. The intention of a tangential biopsy is to obtain a tissue sample from a lesion for the purpose of diagnostic pathologic examination. So um, that's that. But it can get confusing when you look down there at the incisional biopsy. Because when you read the incisional biopsy, it's also telling you that they can use a scalpel for that too as well. But the difference is that with the incisional biopsy, they're going down to the full thickness of the tissue sample. And if you read this little section carefully, they're not doing that with the tangential biopsy. They're not going down to the full thickness, okay? They're just going um, on the superficial layer, okay? They're just going on the superficial layer. Okay, so it actually tells you that in the book. So that's the reason why it's so important like not to skip over these notes because you might read through it and what's going to help you decide is actually the words in, in the documentation. So don't forget to, you know, read your notes, honey, okay? They'll never leave you, they'll never lead you wrong. Like, I don't care, like, who your auditor is. If you have something to back up what you said, then you win, okay? So I always make sure that you are very knowledgeable about what you are doing and read. I read all the time, just, just a side note. You know, I do a lot of things, but reading is one thing that I love doing, okay? I read uh, Napoleon Hill books, Joe Osteen books, T.D. Jakes books. You know, I read all kinds of books, all right? I'm a book lover, and uh, I think that's why I'm so good at going down into the operative reports and comprehending what it's saying because coding is just a lot of reading and comprehension. So if you can do that well, you can definitely do this, okay? So now let's get back to these biopsies because I don't want to make this video too long, but um, let's talk about the third one, which is the punch biopsy. So we know we have a tangential biopsy, and I hope that I'm saying that right, a punch biopsy and an incisional biopsy. So I just told you the difference between the other two. The punch biopsy is what it says. They're using a tool that they punch into the skin to take a small sample, you know, and send it out to surgical pathology. All right. So that's that. So that's that's a pretty common procedure. And that's the reason why I wanted to um, say something about that. OK, the next one I'm going to talk about briefly is the removal of skin tags. OK, so this is pretty common. You know, anybody can go into the primary care office, doctor's office and have a skin tag hanging out. You know, my husband with his silly butt always tries to get me to cut him off. He thinks I'm a doctor. He's like, will you cut off my skin tag? And I'm like, uh, negative. I will not, sir. Go to your doctor. All right. So anywho, that's a pretty common thing that you're going to see. Um, so get familiar with that. You can't really mess that coding up because the provider is going to tell you that it's for skin tags. And actually, these two codes are the only book on the are the only codes in the CPT book that are for skin tags, which is uh, 11200 and 11201. So anytime you see skin tag, you know, you can't screw up the coding because there's only two codes for it, okay? So how can you be wrong? One is for up to uh, 15 lesions and one is for more than um well each additional 10 lesions the 11201 is for each additional 10 lesions beyond the first 15 okay so you can't really like screw up like skin tags all right moving right along all right let's talk about um just excisions of, of lesions in general so i told you that a biopsy is just basically you know the taking of a sample of a lesion like they're just taking a little small portion of it but in a decision, they're like removing the whole thing. So it's two sets in the CPT, CPT book for excisions. So you have the excision of benign lesions, and then you have the excision of malignant lesions. So you definitely want to pay attention to, you know, what it is, all right? You, is it benign or is it malignant? And, and the notes should plainly tell you what it is. Okay, because that's the only way that you're going to know. So make sure that you pay good attention to the documentation so you can pick the right set. All right. Then once you pick the right set, um, the, the incision codes normally go by body area, like anatomic site, 
whether it's the face, whether it's the arm, whether it's leg, you like they're separated by anatomic sight. And then they go by, you know, the, the width, you know, the length, you know, all that good stuff, the diameter. So, you know, according to how big it is or how large it is, it's what codes you're, what codes you're going to choose. All right. So that's not, that's not too bad. So the main thing you just want to make sure you're paying attention to number one, is it malignant or benign? And then number two, you want to pay attention to where it is on the body, face, leg, butt, whatever. And then you want to pay attention to the size. Okay. Okay. So that's how you figure out the incision of the, the lesions. Also, you know, again, do not neglect to look at your notes. The notes in your book have very important things on them, okay? Please don't, don't neglect to look at them, okay? I've read them over and over and over and over and over and over. And whenever I'm coding something and I'm just not sure, I'm always going to reflect back. I never guess. Good coders, we don't guess. If you don't know, you don't know, then you go to your book. But you definitely do not guess, all right? I don't play a guessing game when it comes to coding, all right? So that is that. And let's see, did I put one more in here yeah i'm gonna tell you about one more and i'm gonna wrap this video up because i don't want to go over 20 minutes tonight um and that is like repair you will see that a lot in uh primary care on um, dermatology you're going to see repair and what i mean by repair is after you get your lesion excised and they remove whatever is on you then they have to close it up okay they have to close it up and that is called a repair all right, so the repair codes uh, start at CPT code 12001, and they end at 13160, okay? So the repair codes are grouped into three categories. Either it's going to be a simple repair, or it's going to be a intermediate repair, or it's going to be a complex repair, okay? And so you will have to read the notes in the book again to know which one is which, Okay, and so these repair go repair codes go by the anatomic site as well and the length, you know, of what they're closing up. So you want to make sure that you are looking at the right thing because you don't want to be off. Okay, you definitely don't want to be off because you'll get ding, ding, ding. Okay, so these are very uh, common procedures and that's the reason why I chose to pick out the ones that I did. Now, it's other procedures in the book, again, like um most microscopic surgeries things like that that are pretty complicated but um flaps and stuff like that but those will take me a longer time to try to explain to you so you know always make sure the most important thing when you're doing operative reports is to look for zoom in for keywords i'm a keyword person so i'm gonna always see well what is he doing you know, what procedure is he really doing? Is he really, you know, draining something or is he taking it off or, or is he, uh, is it a callus or you need to look for keywords. That is how you will pick out the right procedure. Um, number two, like, please don't ever, you know, be afraid to query your physician if you have to, but just my only thing is don't query for something that's not, that's, that's dumb. Okay. I'll just say it like that. Maybe that's not the proper way to say it but it's just what I mean. Like, do your research. I just made another video. Like, don't ever take anything crazy to a physician. Do your research. Don't even take it to your supervisor until you do your research, matter of fact, okay? Because good coders, we always research everything. That is the quality and the trait of a great, fabulous, elite, beautiful coder. Lips hair. Okay, anyway, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and hop on out of this video for tonight. Um, I hope you guys learned something about the integumentary system. It's not as hard as everybody might think. You know what I mean? It, it's really not. Um, I actually enjoy this section. Now, all sections of my CPT book, I do not enjoy. I am definitely not a person who likes anything in the cardiovascular section. Although I can do it, I really don't enjoy it, okay? But it's all about accuracy. It's all about finding keywords and, and, and picking out the right procedure, okay? So anyhow, you guys, I made sure I made my video under 20 minutes. Yay! So I'm so super excited about that. I'm going to go ahead and hop on out of here. I'll probably be back later on in the week. Maybe I'll do another screen share as far as E&M is concerned. And maybe another vlog video or something. But if you guys have any ideas or things that you want me to talk about, uh, please go ahead and, and drop me a comment down below and let me know, hey, you know, I would like to know about this subject or that subject, and I'll be glad to come on here and definitely give you guys the drip, okay? So I hope you guys have a very blessed and amazing day, 
And until we meet again, my friends, bye, Bougie Coding family. I wish you all 95% scores.